Argyle is an interesting concoction. It's a mixture of a bunch of different things by Matthew Vaughn. Like if you threw Romancing the Stone, The Lost City, Kingsman into a pot and went to add a, a little pinch of unhinged salt in there, but actually drop the whole bottle in it. In this review, I'm gonna talk about why I think, or two reasons why you should go check this movie out and have a good time with a bunch of friends. And one reason why I think this movie is getting a whole bunch of terrible reviews. Let's attack it. I went to go check out Argyle with a friend and as we were watching the movie and we got to like the end of the film and the credits started rolling, he looked over to me and said, this seemed like a movie that was someone like wrote this in the sixth grade and was held onto it, became a famous director and finally got enough money to make their dream come to life. And I totally agree. This movie is like a, a boy or even a girl, sixth grader, who wants to make an action movie in their head and they have all the toys that they can play with and all the crayons, all the bright colors and they found a way to get $200 million for, from Apple to spend and make this bombastic, very loud, very plot heavy in terms of a bunch of twists that you see in tons of movies before and it really feels like pastiche on a bunch of action films. You ever seen a little kid try to tell a story? The dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. So yeah, that's like the plot of Argyle. <laughs> it's just thing after thing after thing and it escalates and keeps going and gets crazier and more unhinged to the point where I was just having such a great time with the film despite the plot being so basic in every single way almost and nothing being taken seriously. If you know what you're getting into while watching this film, you will have a great time with it. If you're expecting something more, something deeper, something you can chew on, don't, don't do that. If you are a fan of the Fast and Furious kind of films or even Michael Bay films, this is like that, but maybe even a little bit more crazy because there's no, there's no thing of like family or time for people to sit down and have deeper conversations or anything like that. It's just go, 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 go from the next adventure to the next adventure to the next plot point to the next action sequence. And it's wrapped in a kind of a spy thriller espionage kind of film that's so loud, it doesn't feel like it can be a spy film. But I had so much fun dealing with all those points in the film. Now for you, depending on what kind of film that you like or what you expect from the trailers, this might throw you completely off. You might think this is real stupid. The writing is not the best. But when you realize this is supposed to be kind of a action adventure comedy and heavy on the comedy and heavy on the adventure, I think that you can sit back and enjoy this. Definitely go check this out with a friend and don't go watch it by yourself because you definitely want to whisper to each other like, what the hell is going on? Did they really say that corny line? Oh my God, that action sequence was crazy. And this loud, bombastic sixth grader script is held together by a phenomenal all-star cast led by Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays Ellie, a script writer, a book writer, I should say, who book writing started to come to life where she was basically predicting things that were happening in the real spy community. And now two different organizations are chasing after her, trying to see what she's gonna write next so they can know when the next big thing is coming up. About. And that is basically the, the plot of the film in the beginning. And Bryce Dallas Howard does a great job playing this very aloof, very nice, very sweet, very, very vulnerable, very into herself person. And she's asked to do a lot of different things in this film throughout because it keeps evolving and changing. And I, I swear to God, the person that wrote this film looked at Matthew Vaughn, said, how many twists do you want in this movie? And he just looked back and said, yes. <laughs> because there's twist after twist after twist with so many different characters coming out of the woodwork. Brian Cranston is awesome. Henry Cavill has his weird haircut. Also John Cena and they're awesome in their like, imaginative what action heroes used to be maybe in the 70s and 80s and Sam Rockwell as Aiden is awesome his chemistry with Bryce Dallas Howard really holds the movie together and carry it. and they had just have a great supporting cast that every single person that has a speaking role in this movie fully understands what kind of film they are in So the reason why I think that this movie is getting panned so hard, and this is the fault of the film, 
two reasons i'm going to package the one because i think that they're combined in why it's happening i think that the movie is totally all over the place it feels like it's trying to have some very emotional moments in certain aspects but you never stay long enough in the emotion for the most part because it's going straight back into the joke or straight back into the adventure and then sometimes it will switch from like oh a lovey-dovey moment because it's trying to have like a romance part to, to action to something dreadful to it's just all over the place it looks like matthew Vaughn was like i just want every single thing you could ever do in every single movie ever in my one movie. Because I'm not coming back for 30%. I'm coming back for everything. And it feels like it was just too much. It was overstuffed with too many things in the film for you to really latch onto one thing and figure out what is going on. Every time you think you have the film figured out, they'll throw it on its head and have another twist. But the problem was, it's not that it was a twist like, oh my God, I didn't see it coming. It's a twist that, oh, I've seen this before. This wasn't that impressive, but I'm still having fun, at least for me. But I think the movie is clocking in about two hours and 20 minutes. And I think it's like, 40 minutes too long for a film like this that doesn't have that much substance that doesn't really have three-dimensional characters everyone is paper thin for the most part and the dialogue is not super sharp all the time it'll sometimes you'll get little bits here and there that's like oh that's a really good life lesson but most of the time not at all this should have been clocking in about hour and 40 hour 45 minutes should have a little bit more breezy and cut out some of the fat and filler especially in the middle part of the film where i felt like they kind of pan like meandered around a little bit trying to do a task that i felt like we didn't really need to see all of it, it didn't have anything to do um do with the rest of the plot and kind of derail the fun a little bit but i'll have to say watching the third act of this film was worth it alone because the mood just kept escalating in its unhingedness its craziness its randomness and its twist and the of the third act action set pieces were absolutely crazy something you would see in a fast and furious movie i don't even know i don't even it might it's even more cartoony than that if you go into this film looking for fun, it's definitely there. If you go into this film looking for common sense and not turn your brain off, you're gonna hate it. Overall, I had so much fun with Argyle. At the end of the movie, I was like, do I love this movie? Do I hate it? I don't know. At the end of the day, I think it's a really good film. It's really fun. I had laughed a lot. I laughed with the film and I laughed at the film. And at the end of the day, I think if the movie got that emotion out of me, I had a good time. It doesn't have to be the best reduced because the VFX were a little shaky. It doesn't have to have the best dialogue in it. The whole point of cinema is for you to feel something. And I felt a lot watching this film, part confusion, part just laughing out loud. And just some of it was really thrilling and fun. So with that said, I'm gonna give Argyle a C plus. Let me know, did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate Argyle personally? Did you hate this film like most of the critics did? Or do you have a good time watching this in theater? I highly recommend, if you're gonna go check it out in theater and not wait for streaming, bring some friends. You're gonna have a really great time. Just let them know. Don't take this movie too seriously. Drop all those comments down below and let me know how you feel. Like the video if you like my review. Attack that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of my reviews, reactions, live discussions, and much, much more. You can watch more of my content right now.